quick disclaimer, I realise that 2021 entry interviews will be run differently this year, um, probably online, so most of the information in this video is still relevant, just maybe have a practice in front of a camera. Hello, my name's Nisha, aka Grad Med Gal, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about med school interviews. Um, I don't think I'm going to be super specific because there's loads of really good videos out there. Um, definitely would urge you to have a quick YouTube search and check them out. But this is just from my experience um, of revising for med school interviews and just a few uh, suggestions that I have that will hopefully mean that they go well for you. So a quick recap, I applied to all graduate courses. I applied to King's College London Queen Mary University London, which is called Barts and the London Med School, um, Southampton and Cambridge University, all grad med courses, and I got interviews at all of them. I withdrew from Southampton because I had received a Cambridge offer, but I still went for my interviews at Queen Mary and at King's College London. I got rejected from King's College London and I got an offer from Queen Mary as well as the Cambridge offer that I already had and I have chosen to go to Cambridge. So that's my very quick overview of everything. So the types of interviews that I had at King's College London and Cambridge were multiple mini in interviews and these are ones where you have lots of different stations that you spend short times at each of them and you answer different questions depending on what each med school decides is important to them when deciding um, whether to take you on or not. And the Queen Mary interview was a group task with um, a one-on-one -on -one interview after sort of watching and analysing a video. So let's go straight into my tips. And the first one would definitely be to just Google questions. Just type in med school interviews UK questions and there are loads of resources out there for these and what I ended up doing was I printed as many of them out as I could and I got people to ask me those questions. So the important thing with this is that you want to make sure that you know enough about how to answer the questions to give a good structured answer but you don't want your answers to be over rehearsed um, so definitely would recommend practicing it with people because you can kind of tell when you're speaking it out loud whether you're waffling or whether you've not put enough detail in. Um, I ended up getting my parents to help me out as well as um, some of my work colleagues very kindly helped me out for that. Um, then my second tip um, for the multiple mini interviews is that remember that each station is assessing different competencies, different soft skills um, and you want to make sure that once you've finished one station you forget about it and move on to the next. You'll finish at that station and you just need to focus on getting the best answers out there possible for the next station. You don't need to feel like you need to fill the whole time up speaking your answers because you might just be going on lots and lots. Um, although understandably it can get a bit awkward if you're sitting there in silence. As long as you sort of think through your answers, um, repeat back the question to people um, just to make sure you've understood what they're asking you. I found that was really helpful you'll find out what kind of stations um, the interview will have ahead of time hopefully. Um, some schools use actors that they bring in, some don't, um, some have maybe specifically sciencey or mathsy stations and those are the ones that I was worried about um, especially having not been in school or university for quite a number of years. Um, so what I did was I just revised some really basic general concepts from biology and chemistry um, just to make sure that I had a vague understanding that I could talk about and they will only 
likely ask you up to A level, so I wouldn't look too deep into it, but just um, some basic biology concepts are important to have in the back of your head. Um, for the math stations, things like dilutions, concentrations, volume, that's the kind of thing I've revised. Um, I wouldn't say I did amazingly in the math station that I did have, but I managed to work through the whole question. And if you are struggling in those kind of scenarios in any of the MMI stations, just speak your thought process out loud. Um, tell them what you're thinking through, because more often than not, what they want to know is what your thinking process is, whether you're teachable or not, whether you can work through it, even if you don't necessarily finish your answer or arrive at the fully correct answer. That's what they're trying to assess. Um, for group interviews, I think one of the big things I went into mind with was um, when it's a group task, be that person who's like, can everyone introduce themselves so that I know everyone's names? Um, and I think that just sort of kind of puts you in a little bit of a leader role that you're willing to speak up first, as well as it's not a hard question to ask. And then when you're in the group interview, you need to find the balance of inputting as well as listening. Um, so try and be confident but not cocky or arrogant um, make sure you listen to people if other group members are quieter or maybe working on something on their own try and draw them into it a bit i find that interviews are often you kind of have to put on a persona but you don't want that to be like a complete fake personality just be confident with what you're saying, even if you say something wrong, and I know I said some wrong things in my Queen Mary group interview, um, the important thing is that you show that you've learned from that and then you've listened to other people. Um, my third tip would be to do some wider reading. So read up on the guidance from the General Medical Council this will help you specifically with understanding what is wanted from doctors and especially with the ethical scenarios that you might come across, what's expected from you. And that kind of um, brings me a bit more into my fourth tip as well, which is read around the health and social care landscape. So have a couple of recent news stories in your head um, that might be a bit more um, contentious. Um, that you could maybe be able to weigh up both sides of um, the story. If you're asked a question where it's like, do you disagree or agree with this? Talk through both sides, but definitely arrive at an answer um, as far as you can. Um, also understanding about the NHS structure. So you've got your clinical commissioning groups, your providers and the regulator, which is the Care Quality Commission. Um, and just understanding how those all interact um, and being able to talk about that, being able to talk about the challenges that the NHS is going to face. Um, and yeah, you just want to be able to have this understanding of the NHS um, and even maybe private healthcare in England. And well, if you're applying to English universities, obviously, if you're applying to anywhere in the UK or anywhere else, you need to understand what your health and social care system is like. But it's all generally applicable across everywhere. And then also just make sure you have maybe any recently published papers in the back of your head that you could talk through if they ask you to describe something science you've heard about recently. I don't know whether they will but I think it's always useful to have something like that. Um, or if they ask you to describe something recent that you found really interesting, then you'll have that in your head. And then finally, on the day of the interview, um, dress smart, but dress comfortably. So um, say you're someone who doesn't normally wear dresses and you think that you'll look really smart in a dress, but that's not what you normally do, I'd recommend wearing something that it suits you more and you're more comfortable in because if you're comfortable you're not going to be readjusting yourself and just you want to make yourself as comfortable as possible for the interview. Um, take some water in with you, you'll be doing a lot of talking and it's really helpful to be able to drink water in between. 
um, try not to give them any reasons to be unconsciously biased. Um, so for example, when I was doing my interviews, I had quite long um, green dip dyed hair and I love that. Um, that is very much a part of my personality and it's something that I want to redo to my hair. Um, but uh, I know that that can come across as unprofessional um, in some respects and I didn't want to give anyone a reason to sort of have their mind made up about me before I'd even begun talking. So I tied that up and hid it. But at the same time, you also want to be yourself. So I mentioned putting on a persona before. For me, that was just making sure that I was more confident than I maybe normally come across, but also completely being myself. You don't want to put across this fake person who you can't keep up that appearance. Just be yourself. Um, be um, open, confident, just smile. Make sure you introduce yourself at every point where you're meeting someone new. Um, that's really important. Um, and then just enjoy it. I say enjoy it. I think if you have kind of read up if this is something that you really want to do, it's, it is a somewhat enjoyable process. And I know that sounds really ridiculous. Um, and if I was watching someone who said that, I'd be like, you're, a, you're an idiot. But it can be enjoyable. It's what you make of it. And ultimately, it's all experience. Um, whether you get in or not, you'll have that experience for any future jobs, any other med school interviews. Um, and ultimately, look, they've seen your personal statement. They want you there. Now you just have to show them why you're a good person for them to take on. Um, so yeah, if you have any more specific questions, just let me know in the comments. Um, but thanks for listening to this one and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye!